All right. Thank you for joining us for a long overdue episode of Bangers. Um, apologize um, um, that we've taken so long, but um, we're going to get in some really cool books tonight. Uh, we've got the Ninth Wonder with us. We've got Steve from My Bargain Comics. And as always, we've got Yeezy Yee Aaron with us here. So let's let's get into it. Okay, uh, first book on the list. Uh, this book was super controversial when it came out. I got to be honest with you. Um, I'm not sure why, given that trade dress, there doesn't look like there's much uh, to get worked up over here. But this is Milo Monera. Uh, it's a one in 25. Um, this is a very, very tough book to come by um, if you look for it. Census is fairly well populated with this book. Um, but it seems like once people get them, they never let them go. Um, so we've got 244 9.8s and 297 total. And uh, last sale of this was going for about 323 bucks. Um, but uh, a book I would like to have in my collection. Um, never been able to sort of get my hands on it. But um, um, I don't know, something that that's, uh, I think is pretty cool. Yeah, so I, I heard they added the trades intentionally to kind of like censor it and stuff like that a little bit. Because, I mean, if you look at... Uh, Monero's covers overseas, you know, they can be a bit risque. Oh, he's got some serious edgy ones, no question. Um, I mean, I, I did see sort of the original about the trade dress, and I could certainly get the the concern there. But where were they going to? I mean, where were they going to put the trade dress anyway on this book if, if they didn't put it there? Maybe Is it going to be like down by her hands yeah, or something. It, that that's what I was kind of thinking. But I mean, yeah, it, it's kind of hard to imagine where they would have put it if they didn't put it at the top there. Yeah, I mean, there's you know, I was just gonna say, you know, it seems like the only Spider Woman books that get hot are the ones due to cover art. I, I'm just waiting for the day when a Spider Woman book gets hot, maybe because of a combination of the cover and the contents. I, I just uh, a character that doesn't seem to get much respect, and and there's even debate. I know whenever there's like a rumor about a spider woman appearing in media it's always like is it going to be the jessica drew one or is it going to be the uh julia carpenter right right and it seems like it's like every other month we hear one or the other for something right yeah, yeah i mean I, th I think the rights make that a little tricky if i'm not mistaken i think marvel actually owns the rights to jessica drew hmm can use Jessica Drew, but Spider Woman belongs with Sony. Hmm. Believe it or not, I, I was reading that somewhere, so um, it might it might get a little bit murky. But you know, I think Bendis did great things with um, the Jessica Drew character um, when when he was writing her and brought her back in. And um, and you know, in her books, you know, her first appearance um, in Marvel's Spotlight thirty two or twenty eight, I've lost track, um, is is starting to you know pick up a little bit of heat and. Uh, and then her first solo series is still starting to get a little bit hot. So those those books are are carrying their own. But 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 this one is, um, you know, a book that'll probably continue to see, you know, creep up in price over the years, just because it's relatively hard to come by, and it seems like people aren't looking to flip these. They're just they're sitting on them. Yeah. All right. So um, we're talking about this book before. Um, this is arguably the book that put Peach Momoko on the map. Um, this is a one in 25 for Ghost Spider number two. Um, this book sells um, still pretty well, uh, you know, 700 bucks, um, 125, 9.8s on the census, total of 179. Um, I, you know, I, I definitely dragged my feet when it came to this book. Um, you know, when it came out, I think I had a shot at it at 35 bucks. I was like, you know what? I think it's going to drop then 50 and then it was gone. Um, so I, I do, uh, I'm, I'm not the biggest peach fan, but I, but I do really like this book. I think it's super cool. Yeah. I mean, I, I was the same way. Like I missed out on the initial buy-in and then when the market became oversaturated with peach books is when like some of her earlier stuff started dipping in price. Um, so this dipped down, I, I bought a nine six for like two hundred bucks, and I, you know, I was happy about that, which was you know, way cheaper than paying like a seven hundred dollar for a nine eight, and I think it was even cheaper than like some raw copies. So I was like, all right, I'm fine with that. But this cover is beautiful in person. Like I, 
I don't think pictures do it justice. Mm -hmm. Like it's one of those covers that you have to see in person to like really appreciate the, the, the artwork for it. Yeah. I think that's something that gets lost in some of these things that we do. Right. I mean, there are books that just absolutely pop when they're in your hand. Right. And, and, and it doesn't translate to the screen at all. So I've got several of those and uh, I think you're right on this one. I've only seen it once. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think it's super sharp. And that nine, 200 bucks for a 9.6, Aaron, I think you stole that. I mean, that's a super good price. Yeah. Um, had I seen that, I probably would have grabbed it too. Um, I know I would have grabbed it. So um, yeah, it's a really good pickup. Um, this is a book that'll, that'll hang around for a long time. The character's hot. And, um, you know, I, I think some of Peach's stuff has started to get a little watered down. This one is still super vibrant and edgy and unique. Yeah. I only like the book she writes. <laughs> well, I mean, and then there, there's the other one that's a store exclusive for issue, I want to say eight, where it's the Gwenum of this. I mean, it's just like a homage of herself doing this. But yeah, like, I think I think that book will actually, because I, I have that one, and I came across the other day, I've totally forgotten about it. And I think that book will probably have legs over time. Because if, if I recall... It wasn't like wildly like didn't have like a super high uh, print run on that one when they announced it. It was I think it was like seven eight nine, which is you out of Europe maybe who who led the store exclusives on that one, um, and uh, so I, I think that one could could come around. I know she did a, another third one with Harley that didn't come off as well if I recall mm, right. um, of a similar style. Um, but I think that Gwenum one might have legs over time. And I think it can still be found for relatively like fair 10, price. 15 bucks. Yeah, like online. Yeah. yeah. All right. Jeff to call. I mean, what's not to love? Um, I think Mel wanted this one on here. Um, I know Mel's a big, big fan of this book. Um, he thinks this is the Killmonger book to have. Um, uh, this thing goes for about. 350 in 98 um and you know that was a little while ago back in february uh there's only nine total on the census which if you think about it is super uh super low so a one in 25 for an issue number two um super cool cover um you know no, most people know that I, I collect a call i don't have it uh it's on my list of ones i need to get but um yeah i would love to own this book i, I think it kicks ass it's very disappointing to hear that you don't have it <laughs> well i actually have one uh and then i bought it from um from rob for i, I don't want to say how much i paid for it but it was it was a very fair deal and then uh uh i sent it uh i sent it in for cbcs on-site grading and it actually hit a nine eight no press nice yes. nice yes. Yeah, it, that, that's a cool cover i mean that that that's a that it's so cool um is he standing in front of the Epcot thing? <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of thinking that to you, but I mean, you know, honestly, I'm surprised. This, I mean, I think raw copies have started popping off a little bit, like even past this 355 mark, uh, just like off of eBay after that. What if episode? Yeah, listen. In full disclosure, man, we are behind on bangers. I put this presentation together probably two months ago, right? This is how far behind we are. So. So some of these prices that I have listed here might be a little dated. We may have eclipsed these. So um, I, I do apologize. When I pulled this together, it was it was a while ago. So I would not be surprised if if this has been eclipsed comfortably at this point. Yeah. Hey, welcome in, Phil. Oh, hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, what's up, Phil? I didn't even see you on there, buddy. How's it going, man? Late to the party, late to the party. Uh, you're right on time, man. You're right on time. All right, so I threw this one on here. You know, this book hits two things that I love: Ji Hung Lee and uh, Elsa Bloodstone. Um, I think a lot of savvy um, collectors are on to these Monsters Unleashed one in twenty-five variants. Um, Ji Hung Lee did a bunch of them, and um, and they're, they're pretty tough to come by. Um, for me, this is Elsa's best cover. Um, that's pure opinion, but I, but it's, I really do love it. Um, we saw this book go for 400, um, back in March, there's 16 total on the census, which is relatively low 15 of those in 9.8. But, um, yeah, this book is, is, is absolutely beautiful. It kicks ass. Um, you know, I found this, 
and an LCS that I'd been to no less than a hundred times. And I was digging, um, and it was, and I found it, uh, for 10 bucks, um, in, in the wrong box. And I was like, Holy shit, my lucky day. Uh, <laughs> so I was super happy to find that. Is this part of that connecting cover then? Yeah, I think they do all string together. Absolutely. Um, I think you, you could, so the first one is Hulk. Um, Second one is is it Devil Dinosaur? The second one? No, that's the fifth one. I think okay. that, that that that's a good one. I mean that that that's one of Moon Girl's very best covers. I know, like the Moon Girl fans love that one. I think that no, that was four. I think, and I think five is Kid Kaiju. Maybe um, okay. Medusa. Is it is Cho? Or, What's or that? Hulk. Is it Amadeus Cho or Hulk on that on one of them? You know, it's a good question. Um, I have it back here. I, I, I mean, I, it would. I think it's just Hulk, but I'm not 100. percent I mean, Amadeus Cho Hulk kind of has like that mohawk do, and I'm and I'm picturing it, and it doesn't have that hairstyle on it. But I, I don't know 100 percent on that one, Phil. Um, but it's a pretty cool cover, and, and issue number one is is the easiest one to come by by far of all of these. Um, but this is some of Shi Hung Lee's earlier work too, um, for Marvel. So. Um, now that in and of itself is, is pretty cool. He did the covers for all of them, all all of the all five of the one and twenty fives. He did all the covers, so um, um, yeah, they're, they're they're pretty cool. It almost looks like a video game style, um, the way he did this. You know, it's it's, it's pretty like uh, advanced uh, for the time when when this was done. You know, because now a lot of artists are doing doing it on a tablet now and this is just just really great foresight on him on these connecting cover variants yeah i think well, he was a little ahead of the game with that stuff phil to be honest with you and, uh, um um but uh yeah this is this is a beautiful one and uh a book worth grabbing um if you ever see it out there they don't pop up that much i mean if you look on ebay there may be like two of them on there maybe like it doesn't this, this book doesn't show its head very often well, wasn't Future Fight? Wasn't that one of the Marvel apps, app games? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Um, this book, uh, another one in twenty-five. Wolverine's number three. Um, Gerard Perel um, did this book. Uh, this is another book that is not easy uh, to come by. Right? Not not easy at all. Um, last sale went for about two hundred and twenty bucks. Um, just under 160 on the census, 111 of those in 9.8. Um, but just a really cool X23 cover. Um, Perel, I think, is um, um, somewhat of an unappreciated artist, but his his covers really do pop. And uh, and, and this one is, um, is is a book that's pretty sought after. You don't see it, you know, coming up very often. But um, but another cool one. Seems like it would be a tough nine eight with the white background mm -hmm. uh and marvel pe paper being what it is and i would imagine there's probably um an advertisement on the on the back that is uses a black background because that that just tends to be the case with marvel but uh wow yeah that's a uh, considering those factors 220 for if that's still the last nine eight sale seems cheap yeah, I mean, given the current market, it, it does sound cheap. Like a two hundred dollar book, I mean, Jesus, a nine eight, like you know, you know anything can get two hundred bucks these days, right? So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen this before, and it's an amazing cover. So, yeah, well, it's beautiful. It's it's been on my list for a long time. I've I've never, I've never got one, um, but um, uh, but I do know, you know, I I do, I do know people really love this book and and grab it whenever it pops up. All right, we'll stick with X23 a little bit. Um, listen, I think a lot of people know this book. Um, um, you know, Del Otto. Uh, this was sort of at the peak of the hype around around him. Um, you know, the last 9.8s on this book is still 2,600 bucks. That's nuts. Um, uh, we got 216 of these on the census, 122 of those in 9.8. Um, uh, but just a classic cover. Um, I, I do, if I'm not mistaken, there was 
was a store exclusive that used the same image. Um, um, I, I don't know. I don't know who did it. Um, that sort of pissed some people off, I think. Um, but um, uh, but but this one is um, is a grail for a lot of people and out of reach. I mean, it, you know, super. Maybe one of her most expensive books, if if not her most expensive book. Right. Uh, yeah, I want to say it was like just like a virgin variant of this, like where it doesn't even have the barcode on the front. It wasn't even this book, if I recall. It wasn't X twenty three number one. It was a totally different book. Yeah, but they just use the same, the the same cover art. Yeah, yeah. I looked yeah, at it. It's unknown comics. Yeah, but and they did it for X Men Red number one. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. Yeah, yeah I think they're kind of notorious for taking already existing cover art and making a a virgin version of it. I mean, yeah, I have a little. Yeah, yep. go ahead. Oh, yeah, I have a little story about this book. So, um, we always talk about like buying books on the dip and investing in banger variants, right? So, uh, when we had that humongous, humongous sell off during COVID, right? Um, I was able to buy a CGC 9 8 of this book for like $850 for wow. someone who was trying to buy an FF5 on the dip that was graded so he needed money fast so i you know i forwarded it through paypal i got it and lo and behold six months later or no, actually no a, a year later i was able to sell it for like i think 2200 when the market just was booming so like um you know if you can identify like important artwork on these bangers like you can make some serious money so um I mean, this is just such a, an amazing cover. And, you know, I think once, um, you know, these banger lists of variants, they keep getting bigger and bigger, right? And it just turns into, like, a, a, a bigger chase for people looking for this stuff. You know? well, well, Phil, hats off, man. That's a super savvy flip there, man, to come in at that price and turn that around. But that's that's smart. And, listen, those fat pitches do show themselves every once in a while, right? So. You got to be able to move on those when when they present themselves, right? And uh, um, yeah, for for this book, it's it's held its price and then some. Um, and uh, I'll probably never see it, but um, I'll keep my eye open. Maybe who knows? Yeah, I mean, it was like a low, at like a couple people were starting to sell off, right? And that's where you got to see, like, okay, you know, if a, a super hot variant book is kind of getting to those low sales right i mean there, you just have a little small pocket of window to try to nab one because there's only so many that will sell for that lower price before the market re-racks and then this will actually be worth what it's supposed to be worth you know yeah yeah i, I mean, know i mean oh, yeah i was just gonna say real quick nyx3 was like probably a perfect example of that to you like you know that was underappreciated for such a long time and then like copy started picking back up again like recently so yeah i mean she's going to be an important character for marvel um you know a smart one to be to be buying i mean i think i i think the window to really go heavy on her was probably six to 12 months ago where everybody's kind of sleeping on it but it seems like the drum beat's starting to build a little bit around x23 again so the one in 75 of this is Jajervic. Jer um, it doesn't even sell for this. Um, but that book is starting to sort of pick back up again. Um, but it doesn't, and it's a one in 75. This this Del Auto is the one that people you know, are salivating over. So, All right, we'll stick with Del Auto here. Um, this could be my favorite Del Auto cover. Um, I don't know, there's something about it that just, hits all the right notes for me the way that the light comes off that gun um but this is winter soldier number one um this book carries a pretty hefty price tag right 500 bucks and that last 9.8 was back at the end of 2020 so we're almost a year on from that uh kind of surprised that there's less than 70 of these on the census so that's a pretty low number 42 so um a little over half um in 9.8 um uh, this book does pick up ticks. I've got one in 9.6. I got it raw. I got it great. It came back 9.6. The dark on this cover um, makes it a little tougher um, uh, to get it 9.8. But um, 
yeah, I think this cover is, is absolutely amazing. That's kind of surprising to see, like, especially with a Marvel issue number one, that there's only this many, like, on the senses. And yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I should have pulled the order numbers on this from, from Comicron, but one in 50, right? I mean, that's a fairly high ratio. So, you know, I, I would be surprised if this book did 100,000. I bet you it probably didn't do that much, you know, I guess. Um, uh, so at one in 50, I mean, there's not that many to come by. But, you know, there was a point in time where this book was like super, super sought after, right? Everybody was talking about it. And it's had its sort of ups and downs. But... Um, I, you know, I think it's around to stay nowhere near the price of that X23, uh, but it's harder to come by, right? So if you're thinking about like, where do you put money? Like if you can find this thing on the dip, I think the legs on this over time could be, could be pretty substantial. And, you know, I, I think we're going to see Sebastian Stan reprise the character, you know, a few more times for MCU. So, I mean, he, he, that, that character should be sort of cemented in, in sort of comic book lore. So, um, um, maybe a worthwhile book to pick up if you can find it at the right price. Yeah. I, I think it's sort of an out of sight uh, or out of, you know, out of, yeah, out of mind, out of sight type situation uh, with winter soldier and Bucky. Uh, my only criticism of this cover. And of course, you know, I'm a much better artist um, as I'm sure our commenters will point out, but um, the face looks a little funny to me. I don't know. It's like a little bit shiny or something. I don't know. That's my yeah. only. He's trying to get a tan from the gun, you know. <laughs> it's reflecting yeah. on him. Maybe he's just really cold. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's keep it going. Uh, whew, what a book here. Um, J. Scott Campbell. That sort of goes without saying. Superior Spider Man number 20, um, 1 in 50. Uh, this book goes for almost 700 bucks. Um, there's almost 400 on the census, which is was surprising to me. It seems like quite a few. Um, and this book has obviously been homaged already. There's different versions of, of this done by Campbell. Um, but a beautiful, beautiful black cat cover. Um, uh, just an iconic book. Um, don't have it. Totally wish I did. But um, uh, one of Campbell's best. I mean, I, I think I like it because Campbell's poses tend to be... Um, repetitive lately and uh and this one sort of has its own look and feel to it i'm just waiting for someone to correct it <laughs> <laughs> the old spider-man ball of yarn down there but um uh yeah a, a classic classic cover um another one that was i believe there's versions of this redone from from store exclusives that don't go for anywhere near this but you know they basically changed i think i think it's like a venom ball of yarn on mm -hmm. one of them or something like that but um um uh, but this is this is this is this is a super tough one i think uh, maybe it's a different book i think carter pulled this maybe it was a different one but i remember wasn't, watching wasn't it. wasn't there like a mexican version right there is a mexican version of this which is identical to this one um, I'm okay. pretty sure, but there's also some store exclusives. I know for sure because I was talking with one of them um, at Fan Expo up here in Boston um, over the summer about it. So, um, uh, but I think Carter pulled one of these somewhere for next to nothing, if I'm not mistaken. But um, yeah, I I want to say that Rob, like we had a lot of international books on our last uh, dealer flip side book episode, and I want to say that he might have shown us the Mexico version and the Italian version. I could be wrong on the title, but uh, I want to say it was a black cat, J. Scott Campbell. And then the position of black cat was like slightly different. Yeah, there, I mean, I, I've seen the Mexico one for sure, and those are starting to pick up in price as well. All right. Um, this is a book I've always really, really loved. Another one in 50. Um, this is Squirrel Girl's best cover for me. Um, I really don't like Squirrel Girl's first appearance. Um, so I do like to spec on the character longer term. I think she'll show up somewhere. Um, so I, I've, I've been buying this book when I see it, uh, though it's really hard to come by, like super hard to come by. Um, there's 50 on the census. It's a one in 50. 
Um, if you've ever seen this book in person, the colors just absolutely pop. And, um, and, and this is what Art Adams does, I think, as well as anybody are sort of, you know, just multiple characters making it all really work. And uh, this, 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 this one's a favorite of mine. Uh, last 9.8 going for 350. I think if we ever see Squirrel Girl show up anywhere and listen, right, she was supposed to be in that New Warrior show. We've seen the pictures that come out now. If she ever does, does show up, I think this book has got a lot of legs, uh, but just absolutely beautiful. Make sure to sign the petition that Modern Comic Mayhem has made <laughs> to bring back the AT&T girl to be Squirrel Girl. <laughs> I did see this um, at a small con a couple months ago. Uh, it was it was raw. Of course, I you know I asked how much it was. They're like, oh, let let, let us look it up, and you know they wanted like two hundred dollars raw, and I'm like, yeah, forget it. I mean, you know. Uh, con dealers, you know, m mark your mark your prices. Come on, that's the most annoying thing, right? Just I, yeah. looking up a prices, I, I, it just turns me off so much. Yeah. Like I think most people in this in this game, yeah. I get why they do it, but yeah, it's no fun. Um, no. I, I hate that whole deal because if you buy, if if some if you're selling a book to somebody, they want to go off a of last eBay sold. If you buy a book from somebody, they want to go off listed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But th this one doesn't, this is another one that does not pop up on eBay very often. I haven't checked it. Somebody can look it up, but you know, you only end up seeing a couple of copies of this floating around out there. Um, um, but if you do see it out there anywhere, I, I, would, I would hop all over this one without even thinking twice on it. As long as it's not 200 bucks. That, that, I, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Yeah. So, so the lowest price right now on eBay is two hundred bucks, and then the last sold was one fifty. Is that raw, Phil? Raw, yeah. Wow. All right, another Art Adams. When I when I put these slides together, there is some flow to it. Believe it or not, it's not just all over the place. All right, America number two. Listen, I'll, one thing I'll say about this America run: the print run evaporated right out of the gate. Right, so. Um, you know, there's not a ton of these out there. Um, for, for, for many people, this is their favorite America cover. The Bartel, I think, is definitely part of the conversation as well. Um, um, but but this is this is stunning. Uh, it's a one in 50, last 9.8 for a grand, uh, back in July. 84 total copies on the census, 68 and 9.8. Um, you know, there's been some leaks that America is going to play a much bigger role in um, uh, Doctor Strange uh, in the Multiverse of Madness. If those rumors are true, I think we could see her books really take off. And this one's going to carry heat because, um, you know, people seem to absolutely love this book. Do you know how many of the second prints of this issue are on the census? So the second print is that... But that's not this cover, right? It's the one is with it, her the, in the. Is that the it, one with her in the hat? Um, yeah, yeah, like the the Beyonce the homage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that second print is tough as hell for that uh, for that book. I want to say there's four total on the census, yeah. and then there's like three nine eights, and I have one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Dino had had another one, and I forgot to bid on it because I wanted to be the greedy person that had two out of the three. <laughs> so, but. Uh, yeah, someone someone got a steal on it. I'll say that. That's a badass cover, man. Uh, I, I do I do love that book. We'll have to put that one on. We'll do another version of bangers that aren't variants, and we'll have to drop that book on that list. Uh, okay. that, that that that's a super cool one. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, um, her her books are, are are tough as hell to come by, and uh, and this one's long gone. Um, I, I expected move higher from here. If, if her character hits big on the big screen, I know they did a lot of one in twenty fives for like the first was it four or five issues for this run where they just trying to incentivize people to order more. Uh, exactly. What because when when and whenever I find any America, I, which is few and far in between, that I find any back issues of America. Um, Never see any incentive ratios. Um, 
And when I do, when I do find, when I do find them, you know, the issues are always scattered. You know, it'll jump from like a three all the way up to to eight. It's really no flow or consistency with the way I see these and back, you know, and back um back back issue bins. So it just has me wondering, like, is everybody just cleared out a lot of back issue bins on this or people just kind of pick through what they wanted? Um, I don't think I was actively collecting at this time. I might have just been reading everything digital around this time. So I can, you know, it's not like I can go back and remember a time where this stuff was just sitting, you know, in back issue bins or nobody was really buying it. But it was super short ordered. I mean, this book. The last three or four issues were less than 10,000 ordered. The last issue was less than 6,000 ordered. Um, I, I think it was in like the 12,000 ordered for a bulk of the run. I mean, there's just not a, they were, nobody was ordering this book. And, and, and granted, listen, if you've read it, it's not the, the greatest read of all time. Um, Definitely not. But um, <laughs> um, the, uh, um, which is maybe why the orders are so low, but, they're 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 tough books. They're they're tough books to come by. To put together the twelve run set is not easy. Is this not? Yeah, easy. I've been I've been struggling with it. I uh I went into a shop. It might have it might have been Titan there, and I went there a couple of weeks ago, and they had a you know they had a few they had a few of the books there. They had like a one in ten there, um, and a couple of other issues. And I was like, all right, that's more than what I've seen at one you know at one time and. In any any place, it's always just like two or three random issues. Whenever I find this and back issue being so, yeah, man, when she blows up, it's gonna be a lot of heartbroken people because I just think it's gonna be hard for people to get the books that that they want at a you know out of the series, especially even like the cover A's in this are, are hard to find. Um, and when she comes, and you know, of course, we already getting Kate Bishop. I feel like those covers are just gonna shoot. Through the roof, man. With with her and Kate on it, I just yeah, you're right. It's gonna be a problem, man. Especially the Bartell ones on top of that. That Bartell, that was issue eight. Am I right about that, Aaron? Was the issue? I, I think it was. Uh, I, I, I know. A one I know, in twenty. Yeah, I know. Samson was a big fan of it. A one in twenty-five on issue number eight for a book that was getting like twelve thousand orders. I mean, that thing is a is a legit ghost. I saw it at an LPS for two hundred bucks, and I kicked myself for not pulling the trigger on it. it was like, ah. Yeah, it was issue eight. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a beautiful book. It's a beautiful book. All right. Yeah. All right, we got some DC love in the house here. Um, uh, Gillian March. This is a one in ten for Superboy number two. Um, this is an amazing Poison Ivy cover. Looks like she just had her way with uh, is that Superboy back there? I guess I suppose. Um, uh, th this book is hard as hell to find. There's 25 on the census, 15 and 9.8. Last one sold for 175, um, but this book. Last time I looked, I think there was maybe one raw and one graded on on eBay. Um, super tough to come by, but um, I love, love, love this, love this cover. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. Um, yeah, it, I mean, Gillian Marsh, you, you definitely can pick his covers out of a lineup. I mean, it's very reminiscent of the um, Gotham City Sirens, the connecting covers there. I think it's like issues, what, four, five, and six. One is Catwoman, one's Poison Ivy, one's uh, um, Harley. So, yeah, it's um, – this was – you know, a lot of these books were right before the New 52 started, and, uh, you know, DC wasn't doing very, very well. And, yeah, this was a very short series. Yeah, I and mean, we could have had this on the Ghosts show to be honest with you given how tough it is to find um but uh looks like she stole his t-shirt there too is that am I, am, I, am I interpreting that correctly i don't know um yeah <laughs> yeah she got him love drunk <laughs> <laughs> into that one girl i still want that shirt back <laughs> 
Okay. Uh, I, I know Adam Hughes did a number of Zatanna covers, and um, um, and I, I believe the one with her sort of standing, the full body shot with the top hat, it might have been issue number 12, is uh, in, in many people's opinion the one to have. But um, when I talk to guys like Big Leg, a few others, like a lot of people that I respect in the community – think this is the best book and I, and I would agree I, I think there's something super special about it it goes for 700 bucks right in a 9.8 right i mean that's crazy right now granted this black covered is not easy right so we have we have 215 on the census less than 70 and 9.8 so it's a tough 9.8 for a modern um but uh zatanna um is going to be a big thing and um and, and this book is just stunning for me so dropped it on the list here right. and hughes we're starting to see a huge resurgence at the moment um with with sort of uh his recent covers you know gun honey obviously this week causing sort of a fire but you know who, who knows where this one can go if, if hughes really in the new collectors start to respond to his stuff it, 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 this thing could could hit the moon who knows yeah i'm Hughes is amazing, and then and, you know it's great to see like cover A is like getting some love too. That um, I think is like it's one of those things that sometimes it's hard for for collectors to learn that like you know sometimes cover A is the one to have, and this this kind of proves it. Yeah, yeah. It's tough black cover too. You know, no wonder it goes for that much in a nine eight. So I had oh, a. I think it was the la last issue or next to last issue. So. I think it's the final issue, and um, so I had a customer. Um, so the last C two E two in Chicago, um, some guy went up to my booth and I'm like, "Hey, you got that Zatanna cover? That uh, that black cover?" And I'm like, "No, I I, I didn't. I, what are you talking about?" And he's like. And then it came back to my mind that he was at my booth the year before. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah. So now you, you know, and back then it was only like, I think I had it up for like, I don't know, 75 bucks for a near mint raw. And like, yeah, uh, this is a tough one to get um, in nine, eight. And I, I submitted like three of these. I finally got one come back as a nine, eight. And like it sold for a steal, like it sold for like three years ago for like for freaking like, I bet like three hundred something bucks. Like, this is just a, this is just a magical cover for sure. All right. Okay, here's a one in ten. Um, yeah, there's something cool about this book. This book's pretty tricky to to, to find on its own right. This is Josh Middleton. I mean, Josh Middleton is uh, an amazing artist who has varied his style more than any artist that I can think of. I have never seen an artist vary their style so much and kill it no matter what he's doing. Um, um, uh, but this is uh, um, issue number 50. You know, the price on this in the last sale, like, granted, it was almost um, you know a year and a half ago back in... March of 2020, it's all for $37 in a 9.8, right? You almost can't get a book graded for 37 bucks now. Um, good luck finding it for this price now. Uh, there's only 28 on the census, 18 and 9.8. Um, uh, but a book I've always uh, really admired. Uh, I, I think it's really, really, really quite stunning. Yeah, I think in contrast to Gillian March, just, just like you said, Ben, uh, Middleton, you, you can't pick out from a lineup because he 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 cha he changes, you know, he's very versatile and he changes his style. Yeah, I mean I, I remember I, I can remember the day I saw his first work. I mean, I can remember the store I was in. I was in Harvard Square in Cambridge at New England Comics, and I saw issue number one of NYX. And I'm like, what the hell is this? And uh and, and then I, I put it on my my sub list. So you know, I was fortunate enough to get issue number three, but you know that that cover, um, you know, is still one of my favorites today. It doesn't issue number one doesn't go for anything really, but 
Uh, but that was the first time I was really ever exposed to Middleton and just like, this guy's, this guy's something unique because that cover at the time would look like nothing else on the shelves, right? N there was nothing that even looked anywhere close to it. The colors, the line work, and it, it looks nothing like this one, to be perfectly honest with you. But, um, but yeah, Josh Middleton is, is super, is super cool. But it's really cool to see an artist be able to show off his talents instead of just being typecasted into just doing a certain style that you can see like, a real progression of their work and it's like kind of like they can do it all but i mean like instead of just like you know just doing what sells they'll change it up you know what i mean so they don't get uh i guess forgotten about in the market yeah you know who's like that a little bit is is the call like he his range is super wide in some of this stuff and a lot of the stuff that he does doesn't show up on a lot of the mainstream covers for like dc or for marvel but he's got a super wide range as well um yeah it, it's super it's super refreshing rather than just sort of doing the same thing over and over again and other people love that and and frankly hughes is sort of the master of that right people like his style for what it is and they want to see that specific style every time it comes out and, that, and i think that's great i mean he does Hughes better than anybody does hughes right but uh um <laughs> but some of these other guys um 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 have, have a bit more range to it but uh yeah, a super cool book and another one that I have on the list but don't have in the collection. All right, uh, Moon Knight number one, uh, second print by Alex Malief. This is a super tough book um, to come by. Super tough. 13 on the census, right? 13. Think about that for a second, right? Uh, very, very difficult. Tough and high grade. I've got two copies of this. Uh, you know, I used to buy this book years ago when i saw it always has spine ticks in it uh, at least my two copies um but um this is one of the best moon knight covers i, I gotta be honest the leaves covers for, for this entire run were all pretty cool um but this being um a second print um is kind of a shame because i think it's for just the highlighting the character the best one um of the run um and just a, a really 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 difficult book to find yeah, I'd much rather spend my money on this than the uh, the negative variant. That's all I'll say about that. <laughs> I'll leave Amen. it with that. Yeah, 565 bucks. <laughs> big price tag. All right. And we thought that price tag was big. Um, Spider-Man number 12. Um, Richard Eisenhoff, 1 in 25. Keep in mind, Miles was not a big print run back then. So 1 in 25 on this is, is pretty tough. Um, so the high sale for this book, this is not the most recent, but there's a high sale of 2300 bucks for this book uh, back in August of 2020. Um, most recent sales are around $1,100 for this book, still super high. Um, uh, 92 on the census, only 17 and 9.8. It's a tough 9.8, right, given, how, given this black cover um absolutely beautiful book um i dragged my feet in this one it was came close to buying it a couple of years ago a few times for 50 bucks kicking myself for not pulling the trigger now but um um you're probably not going to find this book in 9.8 if you find it at all the cover a for this also actually it goes for a nice price it, it's the one where they're kissing i believe hanging upside down kissing if i'm not mistaken and uh, and that book in and of itself sells for 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 for, for a fair amount, but uh, but this one you know um, is gone. Um, there are a few different foreigns versions of this, um, which frankly is is the play that I'm probably going to sort of pursue at this point, given where, where where this thing's gone. Yeah, I mean, the last time I even saw this, it wasn't even the American version. It was. Uh... I want to say Josh Allen was selling the uh, the version from Italy in uh, in like just like a whatnot auction. Um, I want to say Joe is the one who walked away with it because like yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember people panicking um, during that first rush when uh, Ultimate Fallout Four first print was selling for a thousand dollars a nine eight, and then this book was popping for like four hundred bucks. And nine eight and people are like oh my god should i sell should i sell and everyone that i knew sold that had a nine eight of this book and 
I bet they regret it now. Seen that twenty three hundred dollar price tag. Damn. Four hundred dollars is not enough for me to sell a book. I mean, yeah. especially in the center ratio, man. That's that that, that couldn't move me, man. I'm sorry. Would you guys call this a negative space variant? Yeah, it, it definitely uh, yeah. is. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. No question. And I'm sure it'll pop off again, like as soon as we get closer to into the Spider Verse two. Yeah, I mean that could send it off. I mean, obviously, if these two ever show up together in a movie, forget it. Um, um, yeah, no question about it. Um, you know, I can't think. Does Eisenhower have another book anywhere near this sort of profile as far as popularity goes? I, I, I can't think of one to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm not sure. I can't. I can't think of it, but. Um, um, but yeah, um, a stunner for sure. All right. Star number four, Richie asked me to put this one on here. Um, uh, this is, this is Bartell. Um, we all know that Jim Bartell is a superstar. Couldn't find any sales of this in 9.8. Uh, there are only nine on the census total seven of a nine in, in 9.8. Um, but, but a super cool cover. So this is a one in 25, you know, the print run started to fade on this thing pretty quickly. So, um, a, a tough one to come by, but, um, um, this seems like a character Marvel wants to do something with. I think Captain Marvel is a priority for them and they need, she needs, you know, someone on the other side, whether it's an ally or an enemy, it's unclear, but, but Marvel seems to want to do something with the star character. So, uh, uh, and this is a and this is a beautiful book. I just love uh, Bartel's color palette that she uses. Um, it's, it's, yeah. it's always impressive, no matter what she's working on. Yeah, and that's really her thing, right? The colors that she uses. I mean, that's really what she's known for. Um, yeah, yeah, she has really smooth um, lines as well. I just sold my um, freaking Abbott 1973 uh, 1-25 Bartel, and I almost instantly regretted selling that book. Um, but, man, Bartel, like, I, has she had a bad cover yet? She's pretty consistent, man. She is pretty consistent. There's got to be a term for, like, I, I, I guess a seller's remorse. I, I was going to say there's got to be a term for, you know, for the seller that sells it, but uh, yeah, yeah I've that's so like opposite of FOMO. <laughs> yeah, she has a way of being very sophisticated in her art for characters that she portrays for the for the superheroes, and yeah, um, I haven't seen this, I haven't seen this art in a while. Uh, just kind of refreshing my brain here, but yeah, this is a pretty empowering image. This is this is a nice work by Bartel. That's yeah. a, is that an homage to um, Captain Marvel scene in, um, what was it, Infinity War, where she uh, pulls Tony Stark and... Um, oh, in Endgame, yeah, yeah, where she saved in, him. Endgame, where she, yeah, where she pull, yeah, pulls him back into space, yeah. yeah I mean, back in, back that, that looks Earth. just like when she landed at, um, at the Avengers compound there, yeah. Looks like the exact same, the exact same pose. Bartel's pretty impressive for her versatility as well. I mean, I just sold her gem and the holograms variant. Isn't that is that her first work, right? Are you talking or, about issue seven? Um, or is, yeah, it's a seven or eight, I think. A gem and holograms. Yeah, that's yeah. her first work. Do I but have uh, I mean, I mean, this is like a like sort of the other end of the spectrum, you know, from her from that cover and. I mean, I, and when you look at some of her other, like, I don't know, it, it's pretty, you know, maybe maybe she's like the female Middleton, or you know, I mean, she she has some versatility. You don't always look and say, oh, that's a Bartel cover, you know? Yeah, I would say the one thing that ties her covers together generally are the color palette that she uses. I mean, mm -hmm. that's 
that, that that's how you identify it. But yeah, how she mixes it up, I think you're right, Steve. I, th I think you're right. All right, next. Ah, this is this is a this is the book that sort of set the hip hop rage in motion, right? Um, Spider Man number one, Adi Granov. Um, uh, this was a qualifier. Um, last sale for five hundred. Um, which honestly, for this book, I think is good. We're going to look back on it and view that as being a steal. To be honest with you, um, the, 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 this is a special, a special book in my opinion. Uh, it's not exactly rare. It's not. I wouldn't call it common. There's 547 um, on the census, 335 and 9.8. It's a tougher 9.8. This book, uh, just given you know all these hip hops with with sort of the the black bars on the on the top and the bottom. Um, lend itself to being a bit more difficult but um um a really cool book and and steve you would give me the information it was a hundred percent qualifier i forget against which book but uh, against invincible iron man number number four um you know you had to exceed your orders your orders for um your orders for invincible iron man number four had to um Exceed your orders for Spider for Spider Man. Uh, no, what was it? What, you what, had to buy a hundred percent of this cover A of what you ordered of the. Oh yeah, of what you ordered. Yeah, on that Invincible Iron Man number four, and then it would be uh, open order from from there. But man, with them with them qualifiers, man, it's like freaking Russian roulette. Some shops might qualify. And might not order none of the books. Some um, might qual might qualify and order twenty of them. You you know ne you never know. Well, <laughs> you never it, know. It was kind of funny with those qualifier variants. Like a lot of the smaller shops actually qualified more for some of those rarer ones. And then you know, with their audience or you know their how much foot traffic they get, they're probably only ordering like two copies. Like even if they did qualify, like yeah, I mean, guess five mos, you know. I mean, in this one, so when I was back hunting the hip hops before they became a big thing, this one was always a tough one, right? I mean, there were there were never any of these to be found, even before people were were really chasing these things down. This one was always a bit elusive, and uh, um, yeah, it, it 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 is a sweet cover. It's obviously a nod to Nas, um, and uh, yeah, just uh, one of the yeah, very very best hip hop covers. It's a it's a lot of stuff that just went right with this one because obviously it's the Nas homage, and then um, of course Miles um, uh, Miles is you know from New York as well as Miles from Queens. Uh, I Let me check I, on that because Nas is from Queens. If Miles is from Queens, then that's just even more symbolism. Um, on the original album cover, it was Nas, obviously um, in. Uh, in his adolescent years, you got Nas, you got Miles, who's an adolescent. Like Adi Granov just lined everything up perfectly um, for this one, and then it's really it's like super close to mimicking the um, artwork of, of the album cover. So everything just went you know perfect with this one. And then um, most I, I so I I bought this like the week it came out, and I was like I said I wasn't even collecting like that. From that perspective, I was just collecting books to read them when he wasn't even bagging boarding um, books, which I kind of regret that now. But this was one of the ones when they asked me, you want a bag and board for it? I was like, yeah, just let me get a bag and board for it. And I'm glad I did, because when I finally got it graded, it came back a nine eight. Um, but now, whenever I find issues of this, which is few and far in between, they always have bad color rub, not only on the on the black bars. Of course, that that back uh, of it is a kind of a multicolored background, but it has a lot of black in it. But on the um, actual album cover part itself, where that brown is at, that gets color rub pretty, you know, pretty easily as, as well. I'm really surprised it's that many uh, copies, that many nine eights on the on the census, um, three hundred and thirty five. You know, I, I'm surprised it's that many on the on the census, but that if you think about it compared to Ultimate Fallout 4, that's nothing. <laughs> so, For a character as big as Miles, it is nothing, right? That yeah. 
I mean, the, the number may those numbers may look on the high end, but they really aren't when you think about um, the popularity of this character, which is yeah. maybe unrivaled right now in comics. Yeah, that's not even so. Anybody who um, that's not even enough to give like. 10% of the people who own the Ultimate Fallout 4 are not in a 9-8 a, a copy of this. So, it, this, this book definitely has legs. It's only going to go up and up and up. Well, and then one thing I've noticed is that a lot of people that are collecting hip-hop variants are traditionally not even comic collectors. They're just like, a lot of times they're just huge hip-hop fans. Um, that's that's just something I've noticed that like it's like it's like oh I own a few comics and it's it's all the hip hop covers and that's all yeah. I'm looking for. Yeah, so this might be outside sort of the normal collector circulation that we normally see yeah. for this stuff. It's a good point. All right, all right, we got we got a little sort of sub segment here. I call these back issue bin bangers. Um, these are books that are, are, are I think are super cool. But you might be able to find these things just hanging around in, in your back issue bins. Uh, they don't necessarily have big price tags, but just super cool books. And we'll just go through these pretty quickly. Uh, but these uh, these aren't necessarily so much about the price, just some classic books. All right. So Bite Club number one. I mean, this cover sticks in my freaking brain for, for all these years. Um, uh, Frank Whiteley, this is just a cover A. Nine, last 9.8 was back in 2019 right so we're talking over two years ago at this point for 70 bucks um there were 38 uh total on the census 28 and 9.8 um uh, i did put a note there is a there is a 10.0 and there's a 9.9 .9. um uh but yeah i mean this is uh, uh i remember when this book came out um you know classic vertigo cover just you know super cool so, just out of curiosity, has anyone on the panel actually hit a 10? Like, subbing the book themselves? Never. Nope. Yeah, I mean, the highest I've hit is a 9.9. And I think 9 for you hit a 9.9 also, right? Yeah, not that 9.9 nine on that um, the Ultimate Fallout 4 uh, variant that, that Dennis Barge did. But, I mean, I got two 9.9s on that, but... My buddy also got two nine nines on that, and Dennis also got two nine nines on that. So that nine nine might be the nine eight on that book. So we have to see. But whenever I see people get nine nines, it's on the most random books. Like uh, a guy I know, Car Gems, he did like his first uh, CBCS submission, and he got back a nine nine on like a random. Scotty Young, like one of those symbiote uh, miniseries they just came out with. He got like a 9-9 nine -nine on that. Um, Andy, um, whenever he gets 9-9 nine -nine backs, it's like on the most random books, like on the Department of Truth, fifth print, 9-9. Nine -nine. It's never like any consistency, like with a certain company or like, you know, or a certain or a certain well, style of book. It's just always just like ran <laughs> random. Well, wasn't Andy's uh, on that DOT? Wasn't it the secret variant that hit that nine nine? No, it was it was the secret variant. Um, but I don't think it was the no. You remember how they had that mix up between the yellow cover and then they had the one with oh, okay. the, the one in twenty five with the la lady in red. Yeah, it was when the fifth printing when that six whatever whatever that yellow printing. It was <laughs> yeah. whenever that got printed as the regular cover. He got a nine nine on on that one on the book that wasn't even supposed to be produced. But he gets Andy gets a lot of nine nines. But also he, I think he picks his books up like directly from the UPS facility, so they're not sitting around on the UPS van all day getting thrown around every which uh -oh. way. And then the, he the take, side up, yeah. And then he's <laughs> taking them, hand delivering them to CBCS himself. So and he's picking them out you know, with with great care. So it's like, okay, it's a little bit easier for him to hit nine nines because he's circumventing one of the big problems you have with grading books. And that's, you know, of course, the book being shipped to you and you shipping it to the grading company. And, you know, and there's a lot that can happen, you know, in, you know, in between all those movements that 
that they they go with you know with with shipping your book off with you know some random company. So most of the time when I see nine nines like that, it's when the it's when the middleman has been cut out with of it somewhat. So I'm imagining when Dennis got his UF4s in that they had to come on a pallet, right? And that's far different than shipping a bunch of individual books books and boxes. And then when Dennis shipped mines to me, like I ordered a bunch of them. So they were in a huge box, you know, so they were pretty well protected. And then, of course, I hand delivered the book to CBCS. So that it's 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 some proof in the pudding with that. You know, you cut down on how many hands are touching your books. Your grades tend to come back better, especially if you press them. All right. Um, another book. Uh... I'm a massive fan of. Um, so this is Phil Noto. Anybody who follows me on IG knows that um, I'm a big fan of Noto's work. Um, this one is just super unique. Um, these are all qualifiers. Um, I, I don't know what they were, but he did a series of these of these books. Um, um, we've talked about um, the Black Widow one um, with Hawkeye um, in black and white before. Um, so this is the last 9.8. It was only 48 bucks. That was back in 2018, though. Uh, there's only 16 of these on the census, 13 and 9.8. I wouldn't read too much into that. I don't think a lot of people are grading this book. There's there's no real reason to grade it um, other than if you just really like um, how it looks. But um, um, uh, but this one is um, uh, is is, is, uh, is super cool. I uh, just thought I'd share it. Kind of kind of reminds me of like a time magazine or something that's exactly i think what he was going for um like an old like 1950s time magazine type thing maybe maybe life magazine yeah um, yeah but um yeah this book doesn't get i don't think it gets the love it deserves um it's uh you know you get cyclops there out of focus i mean it's it was really well executed i think um um you know, the trade dress in particular really makes this book work. I mean, I don't think it would be as cool if it was a version of this. I just, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah, this definitely, this definitely got to be more like a, um, maybe like a 1960s, 1970s uh, Time magazine. Because it's more like a, a photo that a photographer took and it kind of catched it, can it? So you got Gene Gray winking at him, Cyclops, you know, out of focus, uh, Angel and looking off into the background. Um, it definitely got that that color palette, you know, got those 1960s, 1970s vibe. This man, I, one thing Phil Noto uh, does great is catching like the color, making the the color the color palette match the era that it's in. Um, his variant for uh, Captain America, Sam Wilson, number four. Um, it's like it has Sam up against the wall with like a boom box, and he has on Adidas. Uh, you know, obviously, like it looks like you know, a, uh, you know, eighties, you know, eighties, eighties um, style, you know, eighties um, time era, and that color and those colors, you know, match, you know, that time era, that that era and time really, really well. Um, but that's one thing that I notice about field work that he does really, really well is just, you know, kind of making the the mood, the colors match the mood. Yeah, that's exactly right, and that's a great book that you just referred to there. The uh, uh, that cap cover there, um, uh, and a tough one too. That that book's not easy, not easy to find. We should have had it on here. All right, uh, all right, another another cool book. This is a Miss Marvel number seventeen. Um, this is Adam Kubert. This is um, this is an homage, and I can't remember the issue it's homaging. I don't know if anybody over uh, remembers it, but it's a classic Wolverine cover. Where he's smoking a cigar, right here we have her sucking a lollipop with some steam coming out of the back. You kind of get that same vibe. Um, but uh, this is a book that I find a lot of people don't know, um, and uh, one I've always I've always really liked, and uh, just felt it made sense to have on this list. Uh, didn't the last one uh, didn't sell for very much in nine eight thirty three bucks. Almost can't get a book rated for thirty three bucks these days. Uh, 68 on the census, 53 and 9.8. Um, uh, but a really cool X23, tying back to our X23 conversations from, from earlier tonight. All right. 
Uh, next, we've got Josh Middleton. This thing all just kind of comes and ties itself together. Um, this is a cover B. Um, uh, last 9.8 we saw on this was for um, $60 um, back uh, in the beginning of 2021. 29 on the census, uh, 23 and 9.8. Uh, this book is not super easy to come by. I call it a back issue, but, the, you know, I've looked for this in the back issues and I've never found it. Um, but I, I, this is one that, that that is on my list and uh, uh, looking for it. But, uh, yeah, just really great Josh Middleton work. All right. Uh, nobody has anything to say. We just keep keep this rolling. No, I was, I was going to say uh, Josh Middleton. Um... He does all he does all of those Aquaman characters really really well, um, and I think if they ever like completely redo like the DC universe and they make Aquaman a little bit more traditional, um, and DC becomes popular again, um, I think his his Aquaman covers are gonna pop off like huge because I I really like his his Aquaman. Yeah, really good stuff. But of course, his Aquaman isn't the Momoa Aquaman, so kind of hard to spec on those covers right now when he doesn't look anything like the Aquaman that the modern crowd would know. I think when this book um, came out and then started getting more popular, new collectors thought that this was the first appearance of Dolphin. <laughs> and then they found out that, oh, it's not the first appearance of Dolphin. It's Showcase 79. And then Showcase 79 started popping real, real hard. So, uh, yeah, it's just a, a stunning cover by Middleton for sure. Yeah, Middleton killed it on a lot of these B covers for the Rebirth run. Um, you know, it, it's just amazing to see, like, you know, they keep on pumping out, pumping out good, good artwork for all these B covers that probably people are overlooking. They're out there. Yeah. There, yeah. There could have been some more we could have put on this list, but yeah, this one, this one really stuck out. All right. All right. Gerard Perel, right. We, we'd seen him earlier tonight. Um, you know, they made a poster um, of this, um, of this cover. And uh, you see that more than you see this cover. And this cover is not exactly hard to come by. It's just a cover A. Nobody bothered to grade this thing because, you know, why would you? But there's just something super cool about this. Um, I was talking with somebody online. I posted this picture. And they said, I, I honestly for years thought that was Adi Granov who did this. I didn't realize it was Perel who had actually put this, um, uh, who, who did this cover. But um, I think it's wildly underrated amazing and, and this one is definitely out there in the back issue bins if you're poking around for cover price more or less so um but yeah I, I thought it was stunning and just wanted to put it on there i think i mean just like the way he cut the, the jeans and the t-shirt and like it just it, it really well done really really well done yeah i like the Ramita t-shirt <laughs> it's pretty cool nice that's definitely, yeah that's this is a dope cover man i'm i'm gonna I'm go out tomorrow i'm gonna definitely Stop by a couple of shops and see if I can find this. I, I like this. And I like how it's written in Leet, like with the numbers for, for Bows. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, this is a Kevin Wada um, variant. Um, yeah, nobody was grading this book either. Um, Hellcat had some, some cool covers. Wada. Um, I think it's an artist that, that a bunch of people really appreciate. This is probably his best one. There's just something about this cover that really pops and comes to life. Um, uh, he, he, he hit it out of the park. Um, and you can find this book for five to 10 bucks out there. Uh, people definitely talk about it and like it. it um, um, but, um, yeah, I, I like this book for a long time and just thought I'd, thought I'd put it out um, on a list. Um, But yeah, just a just a, a really cool, cool looking book. Are they doing karaoke in this one? Yeah, I think that's what's going on exactly. They're doing karaoke. Super cool. I mean, it's like you gotta look for these She-Hole covers because 
Um, they're drying up, and uh, I've never seen this one. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's fun, I, right? I mean, it's just a fun. Yeah, thing. I, I found it one time, but it was it had a lot of uh, paint rub on it, and I, I just been stacking my She Hulk man, just bonding and putting it to the side, and just waiting for the FOMO monster to catch up to people because. So especially on whatnot, man, just snatching stuff up for way too cheap, you know, left and right, left and right. Because uh, unfortunately, a large percentage of uh, our community are pretty much um, just driven by FOMO and they only know what you put right in front of their face, you know. So when the speculation becomes obvious, then that's when everybody wants to move on it, you know. Um, like I got into a debate with somebody on Facebook because the guy bought like a hundred copies, different copies of Geiger number one. It says like, oh, this is my Geiger spec. I'm like, bro, that's not speculation. Everybody like everybody probably has Geiger on their pool list or they ordered copies of that event in advance. I was like, that's obvious. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's obvious. That's like saying, yeah, I'm speculating on Disney stock. Who wouldn't buy Disney stock, bro? It's not it's <laughs> not that it's not that hard to think. But when you pull out a book like this, nobody's paying attention to this book right now. So if you slick enough to buy four or five copies of this, nine eight contenders, and get them graded, and you just waiting on the right moment on this book, to me that's speculation because you thinking in a completely different space than everybody else, and you making moves that's going to set you apart from everybody else. Um, when it, when it comes down to it, at the, you know, at the end of the day, anybody can buy a bunch of copies of Geiger number one, but finding books like this, being able to identify books like this and knowing how hard it may or may not be to find this book and trying to figure out how much you should spend and make an investment on this book and track down those nine eights and get them graded and bring them to market when the time comes. That's speculation to me. Well yeah, said. 100, yeah, one hundred percent. Well said. Um, yeah, this is like a next domino pick for variant for variant chasing, because I mean, people are thinking, okay, they're gonna bring back Daredevil, we're gonna bring back Daredevil supporting cast, Kingpin, but not many people are thinking about Patsy Walker, and it's something that Ben has been like talking about with us for months now i feel like so um and know. bro she has a lot of good covers she has a yeah. lot of good covers out out there and man it's gonna hey it's gonna be a lot of mad people and mm -hmm. i've been preaching this that the characters that you don't need a lot of cgi for are gonna be the ones that we are going to see more often than not in Marvel movies because you don't have to spend a lot of time. You don't have to spend a lot of budget on getting these characters, um, you know, in, into movies and TV shows. It was a reason that we only saw Thanos in a minimal matter up until it mattered the most. Like, you're not going to put Thanos in just a random Guardians of the Galaxy movie for half the movie and spend all of that budget on cgi and also you know you don't want to burn out your crowd on seeing you know this powerful you know character for that long no you save them until the two big movies that's gonna make you billions of dollars and people just don't think about comic book collecting in that way but everybody wants to spec on the movies so a lot of like somebody <clears throat> like patsy walker I can, uh, <laughs> but somebody like patsy walker i can pretty much guaranteed that we are going to see her in the MCU. But I'm pretty sure every variant, her first appearance, everything of that nature is all under uh, undervalued right now. Probably extremely undervalued. But I would be willing to put my house on the line that we are going to see her in the in the MCU. We could see her in the MCU before we see Adam Warlock. Yeah. And one thing to add is like, you know, I you know, Ben did like talk about this a lot, and you know, I'm still looking for that homage that we covered in the um, oh, yeah, one of the pre uh, previous uh, was it Ghost or Bangers? I can't remember. It was one. Yeah. Well, so. it's it's funny you bring that up because um, that it's so under the radar that I actually got a deal off of Mel on whatnot maybe two months ago. Mm. And oh yeah. No, no one knew. What what it was? They were just like, oh, it's some 
you know, it, it's some it's some girl that's being uh, eyed by a bunch of guys in in the library, you know, in the school library. Like no one knew what it was. Yeah, it's a tough book. I mean, it's it's a tough book, and it's awesome, and it's and it's a classic homage, man. Like it's a, it, um, so, um, yeah. I mean, it, yes, there, there, there's a handful of these in this Hellcat run, and this this series is not heavily ordered at all. Yeah, at I, all. I, I like the Perez uh, on Hellcat one. You mm -hmm. know, I'm a big George Perez fan. Yeah, so that's, a, that's a nice one. And then we have the one that doesn't even have Hellcat on it, the number eleven. With yep. uh, Kamala Khan and um, Cyclops uh, using the fire extinguisher on Ghost Rider. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's a tough yeah. one. So, yeah. yeah, we should stop talking about it because we don't want everyone to know about Hellcat. <laughs> right? <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Alex, uh, Alex Maliv again, right? Al comes around on this. Um, this was maybe one of my favorite runs of all time. Um, Bendis is run on Daredevil, um, but this um, this Typhoid Mary cover is just perfect. Now, I will say that I believe this, this is going to come back to other things we've talked about. That this cover was censored. The original art from this, if I'm not mistaken, because we're seeing it, a part of her nipple was exposed with like a ring through it. Right? Oh, wow! You, you you could see the ring coming, sort of poking up from the side of the jacket, and they had to edit this. Um, um, I was able to find this book uh, in newsstand recently, and you know, I, probably nobody in the entire comic book collecting industry would give a shit about a newsstand in this book. But I was super psyched when I finally found it, and um, yeah, this is just one of Malib's best works, I think, and uh, just a really, a really cool book. Yeah, I, I heard you like this so much that you have that same tattoo around your belly button now. <laughs> Listen, it's painful. I'm like a quarter of the way there. Okay, but we're gonna get there. We're gonna get. Right. There. We're All gonna right. get. Oh, there. so you're gonna finish in uh, at Baltimore then? Got yes, it. <laughs> that is the goal. That we're is gonna live goal. stream it. <laughs> well, the one thing I can say that what I like about this cover is that it it fits in with what David Mack had previously done throughout the run. That yeah. like it doesn't stand out to being like something different from the run, and it. It's, you know, it's a different artist, but like continually within like the parade, uh, you know, what they were shooting for for the run. Yeah, yeah, no, um, yeah, it's it's super cool. I, I probably have it back here somewhere. Not that anybody would really care for me to prove that I have a new stand in this, but um, uh, but yeah, uh, just a just a book I've I, I've loved since it first came out. All right, so this this is a tough one, right? So, um. This book, um, a it, it's really hard to find, believe it or not. Um, there were about twenty-two thousand copies ordered, um, but it's nowhere to be found, right? Very few copies um, um, available online. Um, there were five of these on the census, one in nine point eight. This book is impossible in nine point eight, given the gloss that was on this cover. Um, um, Spine tick showed up super easily. I bought this book um, from Mel on whatnot. Um, and uh, I think, it, you know, he's like, I, you know, he's like, listen, Ben, I think this is a 9.8 contender. And, uh, and I think I, I got it for what's a fair price, given that you don't see this very often. Um, but this is a negative space before negative space was a thing, right? You mentioned this before. Uh, and uh, this is definitely a negative space cover and um, um, yeah, just a super awesome book. I will say on the next slide, I just want to show you the original art from it. And just sort of, I found it interesting. This is the original art. And they clearly did not intend it to be a negative space cover when they drew it, right? They must have made that decision after the fact. And for reasons I have no idea. When I was researching this book, I came across this and I thought it was just kind of cool just to kind of kind of put it up on, on the screen just to kind of show people what the original cover looked like versus what they ended up doing. Um, but... Uh, now, this is just a cover A. Um, you know, you, you could probably find this book in like lots of Spider Girl books if somebody's like trying to move big chunks of the run. Um, but it's definitely tougher to come by, and I would say um, uh, one uh, worth grabbing. But um, the last book on the list tonight, and and, and one that I think is uh, is pretty unique. Could well, it be that 
Um, you know, I've my experience with uh, DCUs, you know, has been, you know, um, you know, people just don't or like like cons dealers don't bring like Impulse or Superboy and the Ravers to cons, um, and and even you know stores they're they're gonna they're not gonna put them out front. You know, they're going to, you know, put them in the back because it's dead stock. I mean, that that could be part. Of, and, and even online, people aren't going to bother to list it because, you know, they don't think anyone wants Superboy and the Ravers or they don't think anyone wants Spider-Girl 77, right? Yeah, I mean, I would say the Spider-Girl run is pretty collectible. There's a couple of bigger books in, in this run. Like, it seems like there's definitely, like... They, they, they sell for above, you know, comfortably above cover, right? So there's enough interest in these. So, I mean, there could be part of it, Steve, that, that, that maybe dealers have this tucked away and they're just ignorant to the fact that there is some demand for it right. and it's sitting back there. But, you know, I've talked, you know, there, there's probably 20, you know, different shops around me here in, in the Boston area. And, you know, the picking of any of the Spider Girl is pretty, is, is pretty thin. They'll be there and there'll be some one-off one off issues there mm -hmm. you know, all the way through the whole run but um uh but these when when she goes with the black costume those were always um seem to be a little bit more highly sought after um, oh right right yeah okay right it's it's kind of like with this spider-man you know the, the, all you have to do is say black costume spider-man right and whatnot and you know you get a buck or two more right <laughs> exactly yeah i mean this book definitely has to be tough to get in high grade because, like, even the scan, you can see, like, spine ticks by where the staples are. Mm. Like, so, this is something I wanted to point out. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, true. This, this Marvel paper was the worst, bro. Um, <laughs> pr probably worse than the paint rub paper. Yeah, I mean, the gloss on this thing, like, if you look at it the wrong way, it's going to pick up some spine ticks on, on, on this book. And then, so, I mean, I, I'm not like, I know everybody loves 9.8s, and I, I can go back and forth, but a, a book like that that is just structurally hard to find in 9.8, it seems like something pretty cool. So fingers crossed. I'm going to send mine in and see what it comes back. I'm sure it's going to be a 9.6 or a 9.4, but, you know, we can dream. So, I think the market is going to adjust on that one day. I, I think people will kind of realize that 9.8 is like the highest possible grade that you're going to get, which even though I got a 9.9, in a pretty decent book, I kind of don't like when 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 grading companies gives out give out nine nines and and tens. Um, maybe in in very very rare conditions, maybe that should should happen with certain types of books like metal books and stuff like that. But um, I think people don't understand how hard it is to get a nine eight. Like even if you look at like some of the modern books, if you kind of compare the print run to the actual nine eights on the census, it's still a low percentage, you know, compared to the actual print run of, of that book. Um, but most people can't tell the difference between a nine two or a nine four and a nine eight. So yeah, I agree. why should we devalue a nine six so much when most of the time the nine six will look better than a nine eight, it depending on who graded the book. It's you're spot on because it's so subjective between the nine six and the nine eight and the premium the nine eight gets for two books that are virtually identical is is crazy. I think there will be over time. I, I'm not saying the nine eights are coming down. I just think the nine sixes are going to close that gap over time. Yeah, I, I would have to I would have to see like the consistency in grading that will merit the difference in between a nine six and a nine eight to where. You can kind of just pick the two books up and say, "Oh yeah, that's definitely a nine six, and that's definitely a, a, a nine eight. Um, it, 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 but that also could go to my thought that these um, grading companies have been too generous for too long uh, with the nine eights because you got to think if they're overlooking. Oh well, we know that paint rub was a manufacturing uh, problem with this, so we're gonna overlook that and still get this book a nine eight. Okay, if that's a manufacturing issue, okay, that's fine. But the book is still not in nine eight condition, so you need to grade it in that in that uh -oh. matter. Every book according does, to the standards, yeah, it doesn't have every book highest grade doesn't have to be. Every book shouldn't have a nine eight. If a book had a known 
manufacturer's error, then that book shouldn't be able to get a 9.8. It should be understood that the 9.6 is, or the 9.4, wherever that the average score ends up being, is the high grade for this book. You know what I'm saying? It shouldn't be like, and I, I know this is an extreme example, but 9.8 ain't the standard in the, in the um, Amazing Fantasy 15. True. So why should that be the standard in any other for any any other book? It should be according to the known manufacturer's errors in that book and just consistent grading. But neither one of the grading companies are consistent, and they both overlook clear manufacturer manufacturing defects. So just something that we got to live with, I guess. Or you just got to be happy collecting nine fours and nine sixes for your for your PC. And if you're thinking about flipping down the line, just being happy with growing your money a little bit instead of the big jumps that you can make with with flipping nine eights. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Well, uh, want to thank everybody for joining us for uh, for bangers. Sorry it took so long. Um, we will have an episode of ghosts. Uh, books coming up here soon uh the presentation is just about done and uh, we won't keep you waiting as long but uh thanks for tuning in uh leave any questions comments thoughts um in the uh, in the comments below and uh we'll see you again real soon